Okay, today is October 15th and we're going to jump into this Trello training. I know that some of you are in different stages of the, the using the Trello board. Some are brand new, some have been using it for a little while. So my intention is just to kind of show you around a little bit, make it easy for you to jump in and use them. And I know some people have their assistance here and if you're here as well, welcome. This will probably hopefully give you some ideas on how you can jump in and support those that are that you're working for in doTERRA. So let's go ahead and jump in. My my name is Megan, and for those that don't know me, and I created these with the intention of giving you something duplicable that you could share with your teams. I used to work for Elise Shadavi as her assistant years ago, and then with Callie Wilson for the last several years. And now I run a business where I help doTERRA leaders to find and train their own assistants. And I created this as one of many tools in, that I've kind of just acquired over the years that I thought would be helpful for people like you that are running a doTERRA business and need some support. Make something that you can share with your teams that's cost effective. I know there are a lot of different tools out there that are, it's, it's just a lot to ask a new elite or a new, a new person on your team to purchase. And so I created these hoping that you could have something to pass on to them that they can jump in and feel like, yeah, I can do that. I can totally take, oh, I can manage that. It's not expensive. In fact, it's free. And it's something that they can pass on to all their leaders beneath them. So I'm going to go ahead and just start showing you a bunch of the boards and how they work. But if you have questions, go ahead and interrupt me and just um, in the comments or even unmute yourself. And I will, I will just answer them as I go, because I want this to be geared on where you are and what questions you have. So maybe we can start there. Are there questions you would like me to begin with before we even jump in and just show you the boards? Yes. Was that a question? Okay. All righty, go ahead and interrupt me. I'm just going to dive right in. So the very, very first thing that I want to show you is getting started, because I know everyone is in different, different levels with their experience in, in these boards. As you're jumping in, I recommend, and if you've already, if you have already put the funnels on your doTERRA or on your Trello account, this, to this is totally fine. I will show you how to put them on a team here in a minute. But if you not yet put the funnels on your Trello account. The first step is to create a Trello account and then create a team. So you can see this little plus button next to the teams. You're going to create a team and you can call it your name or your doTERRA name, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to actually go to the templates that I gave you and you're going to add it to that team. So for example, if we look at the builder funnel um, template, <clears throat> My computer is taking a second. So you can see that it's a template because it has this green button up here. When you click create board from template, it will ask you which team you want it to go on. So we're going to click right here on the drop down menu and choose whichever team you want it to go on. And that way it's all organized on one team. And what putting it on a team does is that it helps you to be able to add like an assistant to that board or someone else to that board like maybe an upline or a downline member so that you both can see it at the same time. Ideally, all of your builders would have their own funnels. So you aren't gonna put all of the hundreds and thousands of people that are in your back office on your own boards. We're trying to empower leaders, right? So that each of them are watching, are, are watching their own people and supporting their own customers and builders. So when you're thinking, wow, I have a lot of people in my back office, the only people you should put on your boards are the ones that you personally are supporting and going through the process, whether that's as a prospect, a customer, or a builder. So any questions before I move on? Okay. Once you've done that, let's say that you've put your funnels onto your account and you don't, that you didn't create a team yet. So you can create a team just the same way as I did before, but once you can actually change the, the team that they're on by just clicking up here next to the title and click change team. And then you can change the team that your, your boards are on in case you wanted to move them to a team. And let's see, to add people to that team, just know that you can have 10 boards in a team on the free version. And if once you do more than that, then it will start charging you. So we're going to click over here on this one, for example, and you just click on members. And all you have to do is add a new member to that board by adding their email address that's associated with their Trello account. And that will invite them to that board. And as always, you've seen this in my emails, but 
even if you create a funnel that you then share with your team, still have them come to my website and type in their email so that I know who's using the funnels. That way I can let them know when I do things like this or make upgrades and those kinds of things. Even if you end up sharing your own templates with your team that are team specific. So I'm going to jump into the individual funnels and how they function. Does anybody have any questions before I, before I go there? So that I stop occasionally. Um, can nobody hear me? Yes. Hi, Megan. Oh, hi. How are you, Lou? I just saw Michelle Brady can't hear, so I wanted to make sure that everybody else can hear me. Yes. I just had, um, because I, I joined a, bit, a minute later, I mean, um, just the thing that you explained about the, um, the team. So you need to create a team in order to, uh, or just to assign the funnel. I, I just got lost in that part. I didn't understand what was the purpose of creating the team. Yeah, so the creating a team, what it does is it organizes all your boards sort of into a folder, let's say, and that folder can then be shared with other people. So you can share that team with like your assistant, for example, so that she doesn't always have to log in as you, where she can log in as herself and then access that board through her Trello account. And if you did decide to upgrade to a, to a different level of Trello, not that you have to, I don't even think it's necessary, but if you wanted to, you can even tag your assistant or somebody else on different parts of that funnel that you want certain people to be in charge of. Okay, did that clear that up? Any other questions? Okay. All right, let's show you the prospect funnel because that's where I like to begin. I think that's kind of oops, that's the project board. This is where it kind of gets really fun. And this is where when you are meeting with new builders and you're the very first step you're having them do is to create a names list. This is essentially what you can give them. You say, I want you to create your names list and I want you to put them all here. And what it does is it guides them through steps that helps those people be successful. So here's the prospect funnel and we can actually just remove John. Anytime you want to remove something, you just click on the little pencil and click archive. Um, but when they create their names list, they're just going to come here and create little cards for each person and all the people that they want to invite to this opportunity. So we can put Susan here and we can put, you know, how, all 100 of them that they can think of. And then they're just going to start moving people along when they've made the initial contact, then they can move them to the next, next step. But the way that I've created it is that every part of the funnel is, has resources to make that part happen. And so if they're in this step, it means they are waiting for that step to happen. So if Susan needs the initial contact to happen. Once that has happened, now she needs her samples to be shipped and so on and so forth. And I like to create templates. So I've actually created a template card for you that comes preloaded with a lot of the things to make people successful as a prospect. And you can edit this. I would almost recommend that you go through and, and change this up to your funnel. Let's say that you don't have a team Facebook page. So you may just want to remove that by clicking delete and make this template card fit your funnel so that it's it, what you actually do when you're, you're supporting people. That way, when you create this, when you click here, when it says create template or create from template, it will duplicate whatever is in this contact template card. And so you want whatever's in this card to be consistent and not have to go and re-edit all 100 names afterwards. And so make sure that this card is how you want it first. And once they get going, you can even help your new, new builder once they've created their names list, how to make that initial contact. And I've included a lot of the scripts from Elise Shedevy that are in the back to basics daily mentor calls to make that step happen. And when you move over here to samples to be shipped, I also have other resources for shipping and um, even shipping supplies that you may want to have your new builder have on hand. And, and, and I don't know who's heard of Pirate Ship. Is anybody using that currently? Yeah, Pirate Ship is really awesome. Linda says she's using it. It's basically wholesale shipping. It's a, <clears throat> it's a free account that you get, but you go online and you print shipping labels and then slap them to your packages. And it's like you get 30% off of your shipping costs. And so it's a really cost-effective way to make that work. And I've included all the resources there to make that happen. Um, questions, I see the chat kind of moving. I wanna make sure that I'm not missing out on anything. <clears throat> go ahead and unmute yourself if you have any questions. Just interrupt me and say, Megan, I have a question before we go on. 
Megan, I just uh, wanted to point out that Pirate Ship is only in the U.S. I, I looked them up and they promised when they expand, they're expanding to Canada first, but. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you for updating that. Yeah, definitely only in the U.S. And I know that there are other different shipping, shipping opportunities in other countries, but if you're in that country, you'd probably know better than I would. But Pirate Ship is just for the U.S. and Puerto Rico. I think, believe it does work for Puerto Rico as a U.S. territory. Any other questions? Or comments? Cool. So the prospect funnel is very simple. This is basically leading them to enrollment and, uh, and the steps that they need to be successful and hopefully get to that point. And you've probably heard the law of four interactions that every customer needs four touches with the essential oils or any product. As a consumer, we generally have four touches with a product before we buy it. So before you make a purchase, kind of think what your touches have been with that product first that in, in, enticed you to actually make the, the purchase. And what that means is they may have heard about it on Facebook, they may have attended one of your classes, they may have received a sample, they may have, um, you know, maybe they finally heard from somebody else that is also using them. They, they're hearing it from multiple different places and then finally they're like, you know what, I, I've heard about this a lot, but maybe there's something real to it and I, maybe I will make the initial purchase. And so um, I want you to know that going in with your prospect funnel, I've had some people say, how do I get them to actually enroll? And just statistically, not everybody's going to. And so as you're kind of going through this, don't be disheartened by those that, that don't make the, the final commitment. In fact, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they said the number one indicator of success with a, a business owner, an entrepreneur, is if they can handle rejection. And so you're going to statistically have re people reject you often. And it all depends on how you can handle that rejection because the opportunity is not for everybody. And what you may be planting seeds now that will, um, that in a few years later that they'll decide to finally take the plunge into it. And so just know that you're planting seeds the whole way, way through and not to get discouraged. So after you've shift those samples, then the next step is to do a follow-up on those samples. And I've included some scripts again on things that you can say to follow up with them um, based on their activity with the samples, if they've used them or not. And you'll notice that I have this whole bar under here, all these different, if you have an assistant, um, you totally don't need to have an assistant to make these funnels work for you. But if you do have one, then there are just some extra things that you can pass off and have them do to support you. And these all give you ideas on what they can do. And if you are an assistant, I recommend kind of going through those and seeing like, okay, so if samples need to be shipped, maybe that's something I can take on. I can, I can ship those samples. And obviously the follow-up will need to be something that, that the doTERRA leader does but how can you make that process simpler for them? What can you do to make that less of a burden? Maybe the reminder, maybe that's what they need is just a constant reminder to follow up with someone. Okay, so then you're gonna have the class or one-on-one -on -one, and there's resources to make that happen and the reminders and everything I thought, the scripts, the gifts um, that you're gonna give to hosts, um, following up with no-shows and having the enrollment. Because we know that the, again, not everybody's going to enroll right at the class or one-on-one. -on -one. And so the follow-up really, this is where the key happens. And I encourage you to decide like what your follow-up looks like. What are you doing to encourage people to continue learning in a non, um, pushy way that helps them feel like you truly care about their health and well-being and want them to be um, supported. And so whatever you want to do in your funnel is awesome. You can actually change it completely by adding your own, your own step. So we'll call this a test step and you can drag it anywhere. Let's say that you actually have something that's different between this step and this step. You can just add your own little card and add all the, the details to make that card happen. And to make the colors like I did on it, you just click labels and you can choose the different colors. You can create a checklist, you can add attachments, you can even add due dates on them if you want to. And there's just so much more. So that is how you kind of customize your funnel and make it work for you. And you don't have to have all the steps figured out of your process when you're going into this. I know that's probably what one of the big overwhelms is, is that you have to have your whole funnel fleshed out. Start with, with what you're already doing and then add new layers into it as you grow so that it's not overwhelming. I don't want people to jump into this like, well, I'm not even doing gifts for hostess yet. And so don't worry about that one. Just move to the next step and just start, start jumping in and helping people 
move along in whatever way that looks like for you. I have um, a question, Megan. Yes, go ahead. Question. You I said think. about due dates. How does it, when you set a due date, how does it actually notify you that the due date is now? Like, is it beep at you? Does it, I'm, cause I, I'm trying to use some of this and I set up a reminder to do something and I don't know if it reminded me. So obviously I either did something wrong or I don't know how it reminds, so. Good question, good question. So you should be getting an email and okay. if you have the phone app downloaded on your phone. Um, yes, I do. Okay, because normally for on mine, whenever something happens that like, that like a due date is approaching or anything like that, it will pop up as a notification on my phone. Okay, and, and maybe I have notifications turned off. Maybe, yes. Yeah. So maybe you just need to turn your notifications okay. back on. Okay. And then yeah, but, turn, so just turn notifications on on my phone. Mm -hmm. And if you need to, I know that Trello has a support email as well. Maybe Jennifer, do you want to research and see if you can drop in a support email, find one for, for Trello if they have one or, or a, a website where you can start chatting with Trello and ask questions. Okay. I, they also have, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, if I remember, I'll come back. But yeah, for those of you that don't have the phone app, that's huge because I feel like our to-do lists move with me instead of me feeling like I've left a piece of paper at home that I would normally write on. And so you can move your funnels with you. If you're traveling and meet someone, drop them onto your prospect funnel and then they're never lost. Any other questions before we move on? Cool. All right, so let's say this person did actually enroll. Now the next step is to move them to the customer or to the customer funnel. And you just click here on the little pencil and you're going to click move and it will move Susan to our customer funnel and click move. And now let's actually go to the customer funnel and I'll show you it, that it's sitting there. And I have so many funnels. So it takes me a second to find them. I am actually, I have a few people in the process that are working on translating these into Spanish and into French. So it'll take a few months before they're all finished, but that is something that is happening currently. Okay, there you see Susan just dropped here over onto my customer, customer board. Now I did wanna show you a power-up. Power-ups are ways to enhance a board beyond its current capabilities. And in the free version of Trello, you get one power-up per board. And it can be, every board can have a different power-up if you want it to. So let's say that in this board, you wanted it to have the card mirroring template or, or power up. You're actually going to click over here on the, it's kind of hidden because you may not see it depending on what your background is, but on the far right corner, it says show menu with three little dots and you'll get, if you're like, what is this? This is not, I don't see any kind of settings here. Click this left arrow and then you'll see more settings and then click on power ups. And you don't have to use power ups, but this is just one way that you can up level what your, your board is capable of. And I encourage you not to get lost in here because there's so many different things that it can do that you might be like, oh, that I, and you kind of go down a rabbit hole and you don't actually end up using your funnels because there's so much. So there are a couple though that I've, I already really love. And the card mirroring, let's just do Unido. Card mirroring with Unido. Let's see right there. This one right here will actually make it so that let's say you have a, a person that's on two boards. Maybe they are on your builder board and they are on your qualifying um, leaderboard. Then you may want to ha activate this, this power up so that any changes you make to one card will also show up on another card. And I think it only works with two cards um, at a t like, it doesn't work with three different cards of the same people, just two cards of the same people. But that's one way to kind of make it so that changes transfer over to different people or to different cards, sorry. But yeah, there's a lot of different trail, or power ups in there. I like the calendar one that makes it so you can see all of these things in a calendar format if you're using due dates attached with them. That way it will, you can click on calendar and it'll pop up and show you everything in a calendar view. So you can quickly see all the people that you need to follow up with in a day or all the people that when they received their samples and those kinds of things, <clears throat> if you're tracking those things. All right, so now Susan, here she is as a new customer. I like to recommend that the very first thing you do is do some sort of welcome to that person on your team. A lot of people will send a welcome email. Some people even send out an actual gift in the mail. And I've included 
some ideas on things that you can do for that, even a template welcome email that you can go and edit. So this little Google Doc, all you have to do when you open it up is click File, Save As, and then you can edit it and make whatever changes you want. I include ideas on what you can include in a physical gift package if you want to do that. And again, you don't have to. These are all just ideas. I know sometimes when you listen to calls like these, you walk away with all the things you feel like you should be doing. Instead, focus on the things that you can do right now and don't get overwhelmed by the, the coulda, shoulda, wouldas. And just intend to get to more as your business grows and as you get more um, capable. Because I know these can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. So that's that. The next step would be moving this person to the lifestyle overview, AKA wellness consult. And here is where you can use all the resources from the live guide and the, the back to basics and oil camp and all those different things to make that happen. I like to recommend that when you're having your, your lifestyle overview, that your the intent, you go with an intention. Our main, main intentions obviously are First, let's help them understand their membership. How do they log in? How do they make orders? Are they even aware of what LRP is and the points that they could be accruing if they, instead of batching a big order for $200 once every four months, if they spread that out in a, in a monthly period that they could actually earn points and get less, spend less on their oils. So they may just need it talked out. I actually had a, um, a, a friend of mine, my cousin actually, or my aunt, who told me that she had been using oils for years and years and years and, and nobody ever told her about LRP. And so she, she was angry, actually. She was so angry. She's like, if they had told me, I would have spent so much less on my oils if they had communicated that that was even a possibility. So I think sometimes people get scared of bringing up the LRP because of the commitment of a, a monthly monthly order. So just know that people, a lot of people want it. They want to know what's possible and then let them make the choice. Okay. So after they've done the lifestyle overview, continuing education, and some of you might be tapping into your uplines, continuing education, and maybe you're running one of your own, whatever you are doing or need support with, I've included a lot of the, the resources to make your own continuing education happen including like the tear pads and the PDFs and all the PowerPoints, even Dana Moore's example videos. All these are things that people have put into that back to basics Facebook group and dropped them here. By the way, if you're not in the back to basics group, you may find a really helpful resource. Um, just search back to basics in Facebook and you'll see Elise Shedvey's face pop up and it's a really helpful resource for a whole bunch of tools and templates that they have. Okay, now we need to ship their continuing education prize if they've watched all eight and the LRP support. Now this is kind of fun because what the LRP support is, it's really based on Betty Torres, Betty Torres, <laughs> her, um, her model that she does to make to have high retention. She actually has the highest retention rate of anyone in the company and her secret is that she helps people with their LRP. And the whole idea is that the first three months, she does the LRP for them. The th middle three, she helps them set their LRP. And then the last three, she just reminds them that it's going to process. And so what that looks like is that during months one and three, or one to three, she just texts them this script, something similar to this that says, um, hey, your entire membership order is about to process on, you know, whatever date that they, they had that process on. Your lifestyle overview, or during your lifestyle overview, you said you wanted these things. Would you like me to change anything before it processes? And then it gives them time to think about it like, oh yeah, that's right. I need to be thinking about this is going to be happening every month and I need to change it before it processes. And a lot of people during enrollment, they will ask them, would you like me to help you with your monthly orders for the next few months? And if so, are you comfortable with me having your, your login so that I can help you help you with that until you're comfortable doing it on your own? And that's what they'll say at enrollment. Um, and especially because so many times you've probably all experienced this where people say, I lost my login. I don't even know how to log in anymore. And so if they've given you permission to sort of hold on to it for a little while, then that helps you better support them, but only do so obviously with their permission. Um, months four through six, then she sends out a message, something like this. Um, hey, your entire monthly order is going to process on blank. Um, do you have time to sit down for just 10 minutes so that I can show you how to, head, how to edit your own order, order from here on out? And then you just sit down for 10 minutes and show them how to do it. 
And then she does that for three months. And then the last three months is just a reminder that it's going to process. And it's what she, this whole thing that she's doing is that we know that people have concerns and questions when they're using the oils in the beginning. Like, well, I haven't actually used the ones that I got because I'm, I'm afraid of how to use them or I don't feel confident in, in knowing what I'm doing. So since you're checking in with them every month anyway on their orders, that's also an opportunity to say, hey, how are they even going? Like, what questions do you have? And so it increases this confidence in your buyers so they will continue to purchase. And so um, if you, if this step is too much for you, just wait until you're ready for it. If you are ready for it, there are ways to automate it. There are so many different texting services out there that you can even schedule these messages out. So once you set, help someone set up their LRP, take note of the date that it's processing and then just schedule some of these reminders into your, your, your app of choice, whether that's text magic, project broadcast, or remind or whatever app that you use for texting, you can actually schedule out some of these messages. So assistants take note because those are things that you can do for the people you're supporting. You can actually help schedule out these messages. Okay, any questions before I move on? I know I'm just kind of rapid fire shooting stuff at you. Okay, so the next thing- is I just wanted to know- Sorry, I, I do have a question, but I yeah. couldn't get to the unmute. And I think I just talked over somebody, so I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Go for it. Um, what did you say the um, the text programs were again? Yeah, they're the names of it. Um, and I'm going to ask Jennifer if she can drop the links up to them in the chat. But the first okay. one, text text magic. There's project broadcast, which, by the way, I think I need to take a tangent. If you haven't already heard about project broadcast, is anybody already using project broadcast? Okay, this is only going to um, be helpful for those that are in the US and Canada, but Project Broadcast is basically a texting platform where you can schedule different messages out. I think it's $10 a month for their basic, basic version. And what it does, this is where the magic comes in. Three blue diamonds and one presidential got together and they created something called the Essential Connection Co. And what it is, is it's pre- um, scripted content uh, that you can send in text message format uh, to your doTERRA leaders. It's specifically for your doTERRA customers. And what it, the first message might look like, um, hey, this is Megan. I'm part of your upline with doTERRA. Go ahead and save this number into your phone. And this is actually my business number. And feel free to reach out anytime that you need help. I'm going to be sending some really great, great things your way over the next few weeks and months. And the first one might even be text back with the word diffuser, and I'll give you my five favorite diffuser recipes for immune support. And these scripts will automatically go out to those people and they have scripts and they have images associated with, with the templates. And so um, the Essential Connection Co it, that she put in there and Project Broadcast, if you use that link for Project Broadcast, I think it gives you 500 extra or free credits um, and then credits equal text messages. So one credit, I think, is about equal to one message. Um, but I've seen a ton of people being using Project Broadcast, and it's in, igniting people that have been inactive on their teams for a long time, that now they're engaging again and feeling confident in researching and getting to know more. They might even send them to learn about, you know, listen to a podcast or something like that. And so, Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so that's pretty fun long tangent on texting services. Lou, did you have a question also? Yes, I was wondering if as you're, as, no, what do I wanna say? As you're moving people through the funnel, uh, can you get a, like an alarm or reminder, like call this person this day, or well, with like, like uh, I don't know if it, um, um, what do you say? Um, you know, if you get like a reminder on your calendar or something like that, or it doesn't work that way? Yeah, so that goes back to um, Stacy's question. So you can set due dates, and if you have the phone a app of Trello on your your phone, activate the notification so that when you at, when you set a due date on something, you'll get a notification on your phone from Trello that says you have a card that's due soon, or you have a card that's due today. Um, make sure you call so and so, and so, so it can work sort of as a CRM as well. Yeah, like it's not an automated CRM in the sense that it's going to send out emails and messages for you, but it is sort of a CRM in the sense that it's tracking you and telling you what you need to do next. 
And so here's how you can add a due date on it. And you can add a due date, I think in the free version of Trello to any card, but if you want to add due dates for individual steps, like on a, on a checklist, you actually need, oh, here's how you do it, on individual steps, you have to have a paid version of Trello for individual steps. But for the overall um, card itself, you can create a due date for. Cool. Great, thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, so once you move um, her, to, oh, well actually really, really quick, this is important. Susan is now in the three to six and an 11 half month check-in. Let's assume you're not doing the LRP support for now, at least check in with your people three, six and an 11 half months because you're resolving concerns with people, especially when they first get enrolled. As we know that it's, it's not just like a body soap where we all know what to do with soap when we buy soap, but essential oils take some, some learning and some experience to get comfortable using them. And so you wanna make sure you're right there supporting them in that process and helping them know that they, they didn't just buy these and now they don't know what to do with them. So make sure you're checking in with them regularly and especially at 11 and a half months. So here's scripts that you can even use to reach out to those people. The 11 and a half month script is reminding them about the $25 membership charge that happens that can sometimes be a surprise to people. I'm sure you've all experienced having a customer come to you and be like, what was that $25 charge on my account? I don't know why that was there. This is a time to get ahead of it and be like, hey, this is an awesome thing actually, because now you continue to get wholesale pricing. You get a free peppermint with it. It's really awesome. You can kind of help them understand what is coming. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I'm ready for that. <laughs> Instead of it being a downer later on. Okay. The next one is business made easy classes. So hopefully during your continuing education classes, whether you're plugging into your upline or doing your own, that you are, there's a teaser on the end of every class. Yes, every single one for the business opportunity and not even just the business opportunity, but even sharing and how they can get their oils for free by, by sharing and, and, and those kinds of things. And if you're doing that, you're leading them into the business made easy class, which you hopefully have one standing class like that every single month that you're teaching your customers um, the, uh, more in depth on the opportunity. So after you do the little teaser on your continuing ed, then you say, and oh, we actually have a monthly class on more of this if you want to see what it looks like for you and ask more questions. And so that's every month. And then you move them to their builder funnel, assuming that they start building. Now, if they don't, let's say they continue to be a forever customer, then the next step is what are some regular things that you can add to your funnel to support your customers, even after they've been with you for one, two, three, four, five years, what does your ongoing support look like for them? And you can add your own things to the funnel here. Okay, so that is the customer and prospect board. Now let's show you the builder, the builder board. And this is very, very similar to, to the others, only obvious, obviously it's geared towards your builders. And this one is very similar to your, um, your qualifying leaderboard, but a little bit different. And I'll show you what the differences are. So the idea with this one is when somebody says that they want to build or you want to invite someone to the business opportunity, let's say we have Sam, who is now part of our, our our wish list of builders and you want to invite him to build. I've included some scripts from Elise on the builder builder contacts, which is awesome. And then you can customize those to you. And I will say if any part of the, the funnel or pro your process feels like it chafes with your personality and how you operate and do things, then change it. Do it, do it authentically to what works for you. And if you haven't already, um, aren't already following Eddie via, um, Jennifer, do you mind typing his information in the chat? He is fantastic. He is, um, I think he's a blue diamond in doTERRA, but he's also a certified strengths coach with the Gallup Institute. And he has some incredible stuff out there about doing doTERRA your way. And even, the, even stuff on his free Facebook page. So free content that's out there for you to go find. And it's amazing. You'll, you'll walk away feeling like, oh, I'm a full on relationship builder and I can, I can do this and operate a business without having all the executing and strategic skills that everybody else around me has, or whatever your strengths are, he helps you realize that you can do doTERRA your way. So that was a tangent. 
The next step after you've invited them to build is say, I'm gonna email you a few things that you that, to get to know doTERRA a little bit better and see more what I'm talking about. And this actually comes from Emily Pfeiffer. She shares these five videos. She's a diamond and she shares these five videos with people after she's introduced them to, do, to the doTERRA opportunity. And it's all about what the essential oils are. There's some stuff about healing hands and Nepal um, and the, the kind of the purpose of what we're doing, the plan, like a little teaser on the business opportunity and then service, not sales. That, that yes, this is an MLM, but it's different. This is all about service and not just about the bottom line. And I think that helps people get a bigger scope of what it is that we're doing that they, they're like, wow, I really wanna be a part of this. And I like the feel and mission of what they're doing. And then after they've done that, it's kind of like sending a sample where you meet with them again, 48 hours after they've received their, their email or sample, their business sample and ask them how it went. And so here are some scripts that you can use to make that happen. And then the next step is to send a, one more series of videos that like, if you really liked those, then you may actually really like these ones as well. And if some of these don't resonate with you, then add your own. But I loved what they said in convention this year that business builders, I think they even said 44%, business builders who don't ever mention healing hands to their customers or builders um, have a much lower retention rate than those that do talk about healing hands because people want to feel connected in the heart to the cause and not just buying products or doing a business. They want to feel in their heart that they love what they do. And so infuse that into your process. Um, then you're going to do another follow-up 48 hours after, and let's say that they decide, yeah, I'm in. Let's, let's see what this could look like. Then you start having the very first call. We're essentially going to have four different calls with your new builders to hold their hands over the next month to help them get going. So the first step would be going, doing a business overview with them. Obviously, if they're not enrolled, get them enrolled. Go over the business guide and all the main points there, especially the um, the names list and helping them choose what path is best for them, ranking their names list. And you again, give them the prospect board, help them set up their own Trello funnel so that they can do their prospect board and then start moving people along in that process on their own. Then they make sure they set up a qualifying LRP, schedule classes, get them into your back to basics training with Elise, all the things and schedule your weekly meetings, everything. And then the next week is all about business setup. Let's actually get them the tools they need to be successful. So like sample vials, how do they use the back office, um, other supplies they might need for sharing, sharing samples, and then the next steps of back to basics. And then we're going to actually get some classes on the schedule. And this is where they don't have to plan out the class and what's going to happen, just get them on the calendar so they know what's coming up next. And then we're preparing them to massively sample and invite people to get to those classes. Once they're on the calendar, then you can actually organize them after. But as you've heard Elise, Elise Shedevy say, um, the first classes, you teach them for them. The second class, you co-teach together. And then hopefully the third class, they're supporting you or you're supporting them as they teach. And then they're kind of off. So you're, the whole idea is you want to empower builders to obviously have support, but to still work autonomously and, and run, their, run their own business. Okay, and then you're gonna do the actual teaching classes together. And again, three, six and 12 month check-ins, but look at what you decide, what you want the rest of your funnel to be for your builders. What do you do to make them successful? And this template is different than the qualifying builder template or qualifying board because this other one is intended, and this part where the this is where the card mirroring template might come into or power it might come in handy, is you can have them on both boards at the same time. But the qualifying leaderboard is intended to help you in your mentoring calls. So on the top row would be all of your qualifying leaders, and then underneath it would be all of their qualifying leaders. So you can see at a glance who you're working with that you know maybe you have three people on your front line and then um, sam happens to have four builders underneath him and so you're wanting to see at a glance on your mentor calls and check in on how each of their builders are doing so sam we're on a call how are um, susan um, john and kara doing and then you can type in notes on each one of their cards for all of those things and even like to-do lists that they're going to do and that you're going to do that week before you meet 
the next time so that when you pull up your boards, you can actually look at a glance like, okay, I know last week we talked about this. How did that go? Instead of being like, man, I know we talked about a lot last week, but I don't remember what it was that we mentioned. This is a way to organize your mentor calls. And so you can change this builder template card however you want, but remember when you click this button, instead of just add another card, it will take the template card with you. And so if you just want a blank card with nothing in it, then you can click on add another card. This little card takes the template that I've created. So if you don't like the template or if you have a different process, make sure that you update it to your process. Okay, any questions on, on that so far? We've gone into a lot. I do have a question. Yes, hi Ben. Hi. Uh, concerning the builder funnel, um, where can I plug my launch to elite program with Kimberly? You're you're well with Kimberly. With the the launch to elite program, it's the it's a six week training program we have. Yes, yes. So I would put it. Let's see. If it were me, you definitely want to put it probably towards the end of this specific funnel, just because this one is all about the very first steps of getting them launched. But, um, you know, actually, I don't know, actually, because the first six weeks to elite is pretty much what you're doing in the very beginning with them. You almost want to help them get to elite quickly so they can start seeing an income coming through fast. So I would yeah, it is, is and, uh, from what I've seen in the template, uh, a lot of things that um, the business overview and everything is a pre requirement already a teaching that we do before they access the, the program. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So what I would probably do then is if you're already doing like the business overview with them as part before their before the launch to elite, then I would probably slap it right here between um, these calls. And maybe what you do is you remove these other calls from them because you're do, essentially doing a business overview with them, getting them all the supplies and all the things that they need to do a business. So I'd probably put it because teaching a class and, and learning how to sample is part of the six weeks to elite program. Um, Jennifer, do you know where that, that is by chance? I, you, if you look in my, my course in the, in the part four of the bonus training, you'll find information for it. Do you mind just dropping in some of those links into the chat so people know what six weeks to elite is if they're not familiar with it? Yeah. Did that help Ben? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, uh, launch to elite is only for Kimberly's builder though. Oh, there, there's actually, um, so many different launch to elite programs out there there and and elise shedevy talks about some and so even you may be running one that's specific to how your team operates but there's an actual like template that elise talks about in the back to basics calls to launch people to elite six weeks to elite basically cool um i was gonna say i had typed it in the chat but i guess on and it's maybe back a little bit further but you were talking about the um kind of the process for the classes following Elisa's schedule. Well, with so many things online, so much of her stuff is how to do this in-person class. Is there anything that's, I guess, changed or any place that has resources for doing these types of things where you're in a Zoom environment or anything like that, that kind of um, makes those changes? Yeah, yeah. So in my mind, actually, as I was talking the whole time, I was envisioning it being online. So you're- okay. Your calls that you're having with people when you're you know checking in with them and seeing how how they liked the the videos that you sent them that could be a phone call or it could be on zoom um okay. overview that very first call where you're like okay let's schedule a time to sit on zoom and we can walk through your back office together we can walk through how you use the oils and all those different things all okay. of those can be on just on zoom okay and you can use the share your screen button and even pull up like the live guide or the build guide and even a calendar if you wanted to like a google calendar you can actually okay. put into the calendar together while you're looking at it okay perfect no i just i hadn't done it that way so that's why i'm trying to figure all that out yeah yeah no it's a really good question since everything is everything has changed we're kind of trying to figure out how to adapt with the world right right for sure yeah any other tips from people if they from doing it online before we kind of jump into some other things i have 10 minutes before i have to jump off to another call <clears throat> okay, cool. All right, let's show you really quick. I want to make sure that we get
get into. So the builder reactivation funnel and the customer reactivation funnel are very, very similar. They, in, and some people choose not even to use the reactivation funnels. They just drop them immediately into their customer or builder funnels. Others really like to know who they're reactivating versus who's brand new. And so that's kind of the difference in the, those two. But I did wanna show you two boards that are pretty fantastic. The shipping tracker. <clears throat> And it's very, very simple, but the cool thing about this is you can see at a glance which ones are um, in transit, which ones have been delivered and shipped. So I actually dropped in a tracking number into this card and it even shows it's delivered. So you always get emails from people, hey, I know that you were gonna send me a sample or I, I want a gift for continuing ed. I just wanted to see where it was. You can actually add the tracking number and it will show you at a glance on your Trello board where they are and this does work internationally so what it would do is i've already activated the the shipping power up on this board and so depending on how long you've been using these boards you may not have it on your board so actually before we even get anywhere if you don't have it on your board then let's go add a power up you can see that it's there because when i right underneath power up it says package tracker but if you, it's not there then you just search it in the search bar and type in package tracker and it will show up and you can click add to board. And that will be your one power up for this board. Okay, so what it does, it works in Canada, it works in everywhere. So you're gonna click right here on track package and you're gonna type the tracking number right here and then you're just gonna choose a carrier. And you can see that there are carriers all over the world um, Germany, France, um, the UK, uh, New Zealand. There's so many different different ones. So see if your country is listed there. And what it will do, it will automatically populate your card with the tracking information for that shipment. And so this is an example one of something I actually ordered. It was some masks that I ordered a while back. And it will show you what, if it's processed in transit or delivered. And so on the front face of your board, it will either show one of those three things, whether it's in transit, um, delivered, or, or, or just in processing. And so you don't have to go and grab the, grab the tracking number and then go search it individually. It will just show you at a glance what's going on. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Um, the project board is the other one I wanted to show you. This is the one that, oh man, I use this one so much. This is, this is what keeps my life organized. <clears throat> this is basically a, a to-do list and I've populated it, pre-populated it with common tasks that you, you, a lot of doTERRA leaders are often doing. And so if you don't do some of these things, just remove it. And remember to remove anything that's on here, you just click the three little dots and you can click archive this entire list or you can click on the little pencil on next to an actual card and click archive and it will get rid of it. But another, what, so yeah, go ahead, Stacey. Sorry to interrupt, I have a question on that. So yeah. there's not really a way, like when you do something like on, you know, it says follow up with Sally or whatever, when you do it, there's not really a way to check it off. It just, you move the card or you archive or those the kind of choices. You can do it in two ways. I'm glad that you mentioned that. So let's go back to really quickly to one of the funnels. <clears throat> okay, let's do the customer funnel. That's a really good question. So let's look at, let's just create Sally, for example. So essentially what I've done is I've taken all of the steps that are here on the, on the front face of the, of the funnel and I put them into the card template for every person. And so you can actually cross them off here as well. So you can see that the first part is welcome email sent. That happens to be the first part of the funnel here also. And so if you like to see visually what you need done for each person just by opening up their card, then you can do that as well. Or if you're the kind of person who doesn't really use the card very much and you just want to see them who's, who's waiting for an email and who's waiting for a lifestyle overview just by having their card in that space, then you can do it that way as well. It's kind of up to you how you want it to operate, but I've given you two options and maybe you do both because we know that, especially as a customer, 
when they, they may be going through continuing education before they even get a lifestyle overview. So you may actually have skipped a step by plugging them into continuing education and they're still waiting for this to happen. So that's where the card comes in handy where you can say, okay, yes, they're doing continuing ed and I did send the welcome email, but we still haven't done the wellness consult. Cool, awesome. Any other questions? Okay, so the project board, if you, especially if you have the phone app, I, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm always thinking of things that I need to be doing and they can take up a lot of my brain space that I don't feel actually present when I need to be present with my family or when I'm with, with my friends or, or, or whatever I'm doing. If I have all these to do's running around in my head. So I literally just brain dump everything. Even if it's something I'm not going to get to for another year, I just brain dump it. And I say, okay, I need to blah, 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 blah. And then here's all the things that I can't get out of my head about this specific project. And I'll just go blah, 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 all the things, all the things. And then I just um, save it. And I'm like, okay, it's there, it's written, it's down. And now I don't have to worry about it until I actually feel like I can get to that project. But when, when you do feel ready, then you just move it to the queue. And you can even get rid of this working on it now if you find these two redundant. I kind of like to see what's coming up next and then what we're actually working on and then what's done. And so these are just sort of the wish list. These are what's coming next. Here's what you're working on. Here's what's done. And then I've even given you some t ideas on things that you can do daily, weekly, and monthly um, to be successful that a lot of other doTERRA leaders are also doing. So yeah, you can delete any of these. Like if you're not doing oil camp, remove it, add your own, create your own. And the cool thing about this project board, if you have an assistant is that you can add them to it and they can then, you can even tag them on different things. So for example, let me show you, this is a, this is actual template, so I can't show you <clears throat> what it looks like, but let me show you this real quick. So my, my assistants and I have some boards that we share and I'll show you what it looks like. So right here, when I click here, it's team visible, but you, but I can actually add specific people to my boards by clicking these little people buttons. And let's say right here, um, let's just add a card test, whatever. We're just going to call it, it's going to be what it's called. So we're going to click on it. And when I click, and then a new, new option will show up that I can click members and I can tag one of my assistants in this specific Card if I wanted to. And so that's really nice when you're working with other people that also are doing parts of a process with you. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, what questions um, does anybody have from all of that? <laughs> I just have to say, Megan, you are definitely my kind of girl. <laughs> and um, kudos, I mean, jobs, so well done. I, I have used Trello, but I'm an Asana person. Cool. But very similar. I mean, you know, the, but the workflow that you've done is tremendous. And um, so just excellent, excellent job. And you're almost Thank making me just want to jump over to Trello. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that, Glory. Is it, did I say that right, Glory? That's yes. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I mean, this has been great information and I had started doing Trello, I guess, over the weekend and found your board somehow. I think somebody recommended them to me and, you know, just trying to figure everything out. But this was really, really helpful. So thank you very much. Good, good. I'm glad. And as you kind of get more questions, I am going to do these every month because I have every month, I feel like I have a new 100 or 200 people that are using my funnels. So I decided I'm just going to offer these monthly, monthly trainings for those that are um, trying to figure out how to use them for the first time. So even as your, your builders are jumping in and they're confused when they can't get going, sometimes I just need someone to sort of hold their hand and walk them through it. Um, send them my way and I'm happy to plug them into my, my monthly trainings and I'll just get them going. Cool. Oh, and June, thank you. This is your first view of Trello. It looks like what you need. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, June. That's awesome. Thank you. It's been great. Perfect. Awesome. Well, it's been wonderful sharing the afternoon with you. Feel free to message me if you have any other questions. I do have another program that if you're interested, if, it, you're, if it's something that works for you, that I do train doTERRA assistants to support doTERRA leaders specifically. I have, I have several different programs where I have a bring your own assistant that if you have someone you're already working with and you want me to train them, I do that. 
if you want me to find someone internationally or that speaks a different language, I have a whole system to do that. I also have ready to go assistants that are pre-trained and ready just to jump in and support you on all of the things that we talked about on everything from project broadcast to sending welcome emails to managing Facebook groups to creating social media plans. And I know some of you I've already actually worked with and helped you find an assistant. But if you're interested in that something that you would find valuable, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to send you some more information. But thank you so much, everybody. You have a wonderful afternoon. Um, I do have ways of finding people in the UK, Renata. I, what's the best way to reach out to you? Can you put your, is it an email or what's the best way to get you? Yes, it's hello at meganloyd.org. And you can also schedule a time with me. I'll put my calendar link here in the chat as well. Um, you can schedule a free 30 minute consult with me and we can even just kind of talk about the options and see if it's right for you, if what I offer is even beneficial to you. And let's see, let's see, I'm just trying to get my calendar real quick. I just want to say that I worked with Megan. I am in Mexico. I am a, um, a blue diamond in doTERRA and she has totally uh, changed my, my world. I needed an assistant that was bilingual and I thought that was going to be a challenge and I wanted for her to be in Mexico and we found her and it's a great match. I love my assistant. She has totally changed my life and I cannot just uh, say how much I appreciate it and how much I value your services. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much, Lou. It's been a pleasure working with you. I really have, it's, it's neat just the, the people that I've been able to connect with through this experience that I feel, I feel uplifted by the, the many people that I get to partner with. So thank you, Lou. I actually have worked with people in Romania, the Philippines, Japan, Canada, France, um, uh, Ireland, and Australia, and a few other places, Mexico. And so I, I am familiar with supporting other countries if you need someone in a different country. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. I did put my calendar in the link if you would like to schedule a time to chat with me. Thank you, Megan. Bye. Yes. See you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.